Now these be the last words of David. We're about, you know, somebody's parting words in Scripture are pretty important. You know, when you're going to pass away, probably one of the, the, the last few things you say are going to be really heartfelt and thoughtful. You're going to think about what you want to say. What are my last words going to be? You think about your uh, epitaph, I think is what it's called. You know, on a tombstone. You know, what do I want on there? What are my parting words going to be to this world? If there's just one thing I could say to the world before I pass on, that my children remember, those that hear me will remember, what is it going to be? You're going to put thought into that. You're not just going to recite, you know, you know, I, I, maybe I would. Maybe I'd ask for one last taco or something. <laughs> I don't know, right? But it says, Now these be the last words of David, David the son of Jesse, the man of God, uh, and the man who was raised up on high, and uh, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun ariseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing up out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with, so with God, yet he hath made me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and my desire, although he make it not to grow. Now those are some nice parting words, aren't there? He could have added right there and said that was a very nice thing to say. But were those his exact last words or did he go on? What was the last thing he had to say? But the sons of Belial shall be as thorns thrust away. He said, oh, here are my last words. And he talks about, you know, all these, this nice little passage here about him being, you know, uh, lifted up and set on high and how God, you know, told him this and God told him that. But he says, but one last thing before I go. Those sons of Belial, let me tell you something about them. They, all of them shall be as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. And that's kind of a warning. That's a warning to us today. You know, all these, all these people, all these Christians that want to reach out to these sons of Belial in the world, why don't you just go grab a bushel of thorns while you're at it? Why don't you just throw yourself into a cactus? Because that's, that's, you're accomplishing basically the same thing, spiritually speaking. It's like spiritually just you know, running into a, a, just a, a mesh of barbed wire. Oh, I'm going to save you. It's like, he, what does he say here? They cannot be taken with hands. They are thorns thrust away. What else do you do with thorns? You thrust them away. You want to have a nice yard. You got a big thorny bush. And that's all, it's all it's good for. I mean, maybe it makes, makes a nice barrier or something. But, you know, if you got kids, you get rid of that. You throw it out. And these are his last words. Him just, you know, warning us and just ripping on these sons of Belial before he goes. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron. You know, you got to put on all these gloves. You got to get the heavy leather on. You know, you're going to go out there and clear the thorns out of the yard. You got to have the long. I mean, I used to clear this kind of stuff when I lived down with my dad in the tropics. One of my jobs is to take a machete to go out and, and cut down the bush. And every once in a while, you run into thorns. And you have to wear these long sleeve shirts and get some leather gloves on and clear these things out. You know, the man that will touch these people must be fenced with iron. I mean, you don't want to just mishandle these people. You want to be very careful with the way you go about dealing with them. And really the only thing to do, and he says, you must be fenced with iron and with the staff of a spear. You know, that's really the only thing. If they were being handled properly, that's what would happen. Keep them at a distance. Get a spear and just like keep them at a, they're like thorns thrust away. And they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. That's what you do with thorns. You gather all the thorns together, all that worthless brush, and you get a big pile going. And if you're like me, you get a big gas can of gasoline and just choo, 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 till there's vapors in the air, and, and then you light that thing up, boom, you know, wake up the neighbors, and you know, hopefully that's the only thing that burns. But that's what's going to happen with these people. And one day, that's exactly what's going to happen to these people. God's going to gather them all together and light them on fire yep. and burn them in hell, because that's where they're destined. I mean, that's how wicked these people are. These Sheba's, the son of Vic, Bichri, these sons of Belial, they made such a lasting impression on David that before he left this world, he made sure to just one last time let everybody know exactly what he thought about them and said that they're worthless, that they're thorns, that they shouldn't be handled, that if you're going to have anything to do with them, you better keep yourself protected, and that they're all going to be burned one day. Those were his parting words. Those sound like good parting words. You know, maybe if I, you know, if I have the chance to give some parting words, I'll do the same. You know, just have one last thing to say about all these faggots. Just rip them one last time before I pass on. That's what David did. I love it. 